Hi everyone, this is Aaron for Zolotech, and we're going to take a look at iOS 5 on the iPad 2. I showed off iOS 5 on the iPhone 4 the other day and thought we'd take a look at it on the iPad as a few of you requested it. There are a couple different differences and thought we'd take a look. So here you can see it just booted up and it's probably going to want me to sign in. We want No, we don't want Spanish, we want English, United States, and this is nice. We don't need to use a computer anymore to plug this into. Enter our Wi-Fi credentials here. I entered my Wi-Fi credentials and this is a Wi-Fi only iPad. Uh, we're going to set it up as a new iPad, but as you can see we have an iCloud backup or we can restore from iTunes. We're going to set it up as a new one for now. Sign in with an Apple ID. I'll go ahead and do that. I'm signing in with my Apple ID. Takes a moment. This is diagnostics. So we won't send for now. Now a lot of you have asked, how can I get iOS 5? You can't unless you're a developer or you know a developer. Uh, I actually know a developer that was nice enough to let me use this, and that's why I'm able to use it. Now as you can see, same as the other uh, iOS 5 I showed off earlier on the iPhone, we've got a different icon now for music. Uh, they used to have iPod. I kind of like iPod better, but what they're doing is making things uh, unified across the iPhone iPod Touch, which is where that comes from, and iPad. So let's go ahead and see what we've got here. This is just brand new setup. We have Newsstand. Newsstand is a place where we can download magazines. I'm assuming it's not ready yet. I wasn't able to get this to work on the iPhone 4 either. Uh, here you see Store, and we can't go into it. Now one of the things we can do, I guess, is mirroring on the Apple TV. The option's not there. Now I believe it would appear if I update my Apple TV. That's something I'll try later. But mirroring basically lets us see the whole page of our iPad on our television through the Apple TV, which is nice. So that means, in theory, we can play any movie on here, maybe apps like Hulu, I don't know, I haven't tried it, and possibly games like Angry Birds. That's supposed to be the whole idea behind any of that. Now they've updated a lot of different things. Uh, one of the things would be the browser. Instead of having all of these different little pages like they did before, they've added tabs similar to the Zoom tablet. And uh, let's go ahead and check out Zolotech. It's supposed to be a faster browser. Well, that's not very right. It's supposed to be faster overall, and it's supposed to have uh, the ability to do a, a reader, as they call it. Let's see if we can find an old review that I did. Here is an old story that I, I had on my site a long time ago for web analytics. I used to do a lot of no news on this site, that sort of thing, and up here now we have a reader option. You can see there's all this text. It's kind of small. If we hit reader, it brings it up, resizes the text, and now we have a continuous story. And apparently some of this is resized. Uh, even if it's got multiple pages, it will pull it all into one continuous reading pane, which is kind of nice. Now if we want to go to another website, we can hit the plus here and open up multiple websites and move tabs around, that sort of thing. That's one of the new features and that's much better than leaving and going back, I think. Uh, it's, it's much more modern, just like the Zoom or Chrome OS or Safari or any modern browser. I'm not, I don't mean Chrome OS, Chrome browser. Uh, any modern web browser, it, it's kind of what it should be. We also have some options here, I believe, to, well, I thought we'd be able to tweet that, but maybe not on here. Twitter's supposed to be built in, so let's go ahead and check that under settings. Here we have Twitter, and the reason it wasn't there is I'm not signed in. So once we sign in, now for you that didn't sign in before, we can split the keyboard, and I guess we can move this up and down, yeah. So for those of you, this is the first time I've seen this, but this is a new feature. We can split the keyboard just by pulling. Uh, for those of you that are not following me on Twitter, uh, my name is ANZOLO. That's my Zolotech ID for Twitter, so if you want to follow me, that's how you can do that. Let me go ahead and enter my password here. I've entered my password, now I have Twitter. So let's go back to Safari, see if we can... Now we can tweet the story if we want to. Now I do have to say, I like this split keyboard for typing on the portrait mode. It seems to be pretty well... Uh, or, or seems to work pretty well. It's much better than reaching across with your thumbs. 
especially if you don't have larger hands. This makes it really easy. I thought it might be a little bit uh, unintuitive, but it seems to work well. So let's go back here. That's uh, one of the new features we have. We also have reminders. It uses GPS locations and things to remind you when you leave locations or arrive at locations. So that's pretty neat. We also have Game Center. Wait for that to load. Where there's a couple different things for friends, suggestions, things like that. A lot of people, uh, a lot of people from the last video have asked for a, fr a friend request. Go ahead and send me a friend request. I only have 11 friends on here. I don't use Game Center a whole lot, but maybe I'll use it more in the future and send me a friend request and I'll approve it. So as far as that goes, that's kind of the general thing. They haven't added a whole lot of different things. Um, they have, however, added some, some differences with the App Store in that now you can see all of your past purchases. You can actually see that right now on your iPad or your iPhone as long as you have the latest version. Uh, not now. We'll do that later. Uh, you can see all of those, your previously purchased apps, and you have to sign in to do that. But you can do that on iTunes also. Now, one of the things I'm most excited about is the iCloud iCloud uh, allows you to take a picture on your iPhone and have it show up here automatically. So let me go ahead and sign in, get that all set up, and we'll demonstrate that. Now I've set up iCloud, and what that allows me to do is sync all sorts of things uh, in iCloud. I have mail, contacts, calendars, reminders, bookmarks, notes, photo stream, find my iPad, uh, storage and backup. We can buy more storage, although that's, that's not uh, allowed yet. If we turn on backup to cloud, yes, I want to back up to cloud. It will back up for me, and this is all the storage they give for now, which is which is decent for what we're what we're using it for. And what we can do is actually take pictures with the iPhone using iOS 5. And one of the demos they showed at the keynote is you take a picture here and it will end up on the iPad. Now it doesn't seem to be working as quickly as I would like yet, but uh, in the near future I'm sure that'll be something they're doing. Uh, actually, there it is. So let's let's test it out. Uh, I just was under photos and not photo stream. So let's see how quickly this works. I thought it was off. Let's take a picture here. And we can use this button now with iOS 5. Let's see how quickly it shows up in our photo stream. So anything we take here should show up there and vice versa. Uh, again, I don't know how long it takes, but I can't imagine it's going to take too long to upload. I do have, I don't have a SIM card in here, but I am on Wi-Fi. I'm using a different phone currently. Let's see, I don't know if we leave here and come back. Let's see what we've got. I took this of the iPad earlier as a test, and I, I didn't see anything in there. Uh, let's see here. Well, that's a pretty blurry photo. And I guess, oh, there it is. It just showed up. So it took a moment, but there it is. That's the picture I just took with this. So it does work as planned. goes right to the cloud storage and right here. So that's pretty neat. Now, there are, all, are multiple other updates. Uh, iMessage, as you can see, we've got a messaging app here. And I could message myself here, bring the keyboard back together or apart. I kind of like that a lot, actually. And we can move it up and down. You can see it does its thing like that. It's pretty neat. I can message my phone. I don't know if that will work. Let me try that out. Here is iMessage. My wife uses Aaron in case of emergency is what that stands for. And as you can see, here's my iPhone. I can say, hello, send. It says not delivered. Don't know why that is. Try again, I guess. There we go. It says hello over here. And this does not have 3G. This is Wi-Fi only. And they've got a messaging app between all iPhone, iPod, and iPad devices now uh, that should work just fine with this iMessage. So that's pretty nice if you have an iPod Touch and you want a message, or even an iPad and you want a message. I, again, you can say hi again. It says waiting for delivery here. This says not delivered for some reason. Over here it says waiting for delivered delivery. Now... Again, this is early software, so that might be what the deal is with that. But it seems to be working, just not great. So it's it's interesting that it uh, it works just like that so far. And I'm sure they'll work the bugs out as the software gets updated. There isn't a whole lot more to show. This is still a work in progress. There isn't a whole lot more to show other than what I've shown already. Uh, there are some different settings uh, for... Uh, under here for software updates, things like that, that will check remotely. You can remotely sync. 
uh, but there shouldn't be any software updates right now. It says the, the networks unavailable are too slow for software update. Try again while connected to Wi-Fi. I am connected to Wi-Fi. This is, again, revision A, so there isn't a whole lot more to, to check on that. We do have multi or multitasking gestures, which is... Uh, you can you can do things like four finger swiped up. Now that's been around for a while. It actually was something you could enable if you had a developer copy installed before. Four fingers down, four fingers to bring the multitasking up. Um, again, you could go into photos, use all five all five fingers, pinch, and it brings it back. As you can see, so there's not a whole lot more to go into right now. But that's some interesting features that go along with it, and you can pull down all of your music, that sort of thing. Oh, that does look a little bit different there. Although I don't have any music in here, they've changed this around a little bit. Uh, but we'll go into that a little bit later in another video. If you have any questions or anything you want to see on this, please let me know. This is Aaron. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.